Hello, I got another fun one for you guys today. Today we're going to be learning how to read information out of Excel sheets. So we're going to do that by using a module called XLRD and you can pip install it just like I showed you a few tutorials ago. So I've just started by making this path variable and it is a string variable that has the name of the file I want to read from. So just like when we were writing our own Excel files, we have to do the same workbook and worksheet methodology that we did there. So the first thing we have to do is we have to actually open up the workbook. So we'll make this input workbook variable and it's equal to XLRD, which is our module, dot open workbook. And then we tell it the file we want to open. So that opens this file. Now we want to open this sheet so the way we do that is we make an input worksheet variable and we set it equal to one of the sheets in this workbook and we'll get in the sheet by its index and we're looking at index zero. So since there's only one sheet, that sheet is at index zero. So now sheet one is stored in input worksheet and we can start reading from it. But before we do that, it might be useful to know just how many rows and columns are in this. So there's something built into XLRD worksheets. So we can say the name of a worksheet dot in rows or in calls. And what that does is when we run this, it'll print out how many rows are in there and how many columns. So we see four rows and two columns. So this is very useful, um, especially when you're looping through big files, which you'll see later. So now what if we just wanted to print one cell? So let's print out the cell Kyle or the cell with Kyle in it. So I'll just paste this below. So I'm saying, look in my input worksheet, which is sheet one, and look at the cell value at one zero. And again, one is the Y value and zero is the X value. For some weird reason, they do Y, X instead of X, Y, but that says go to an X of zero, which is this A column, and a Y of one, which is row two, because they start at one, we start at zero. That's why there's that difference. So if we run this, we should see Kyle print out, and we do. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two lists, and I want them to be filled with the names and the scores. So I want Kyle, Bob, and Mary to be in names and 70, 82, and 71 to be stored in, in scores. So one way we can do this is we can say names.append and we want to append a value out of this worksheet. So I want the first name is at one zero. So now I have Kyle in there so if I copy this and paste it twice, change this to 2 and 3 I now have Kyle, Bob, and Mary stored in names. So I'll print that out. And you can see Kyle, Bob, and Mary are now stored in there. So again, we are going to take these three lines and rewrite it as a loop. Again, in the interest of time, I'm just going to paste in this loop and we can talk about it. What I'm saying is I want to loop through every row that exists in this input worksheet. And while I'm at that row, I'm going to take whatever is in uh, column zero, which is our A column, and I'm going to append that to my names list. So now if I delete this and I go down here, and I can just print out names so we can see what's happening. So you can see names, Kyle, Bob, and Mary appear. <clears throat> so we might not want the header here. So if we wanted to skip over that, we need to say, we need to start our range at one instead of zero. Because if we put nothing there, if we don't include this, it just counts as zero. So by saying start at one, that is going to start us at position Kyle and just go on from there. So now the only thing left to do is do the same thing for the scores. So I'll copy this, paste it here. <clears throat> we need to change the name. So we are appending to scores and we're not appending whatever's in column zero, we're appending whatever's in column one. 
So now I will also print out the value of scores and we can make sure everything's working. So we see that scores print out. Some of you might notice that scores is actually holding floats instead of integers like we see in this Excel file. And that's because Excel doesn't really store integers. Everything is a float in Excel. So what we need to do is let's look at what we're actually appending to scores. So it's just this little bit and I'll put it on its own line. <clears throat> so this, you know, is initially 70, then 82, then 71. Well, we want this, we always want this number to be an integer. So we'll parse it as that. So now even if we get like a float of 70.0 or 82.0, it's gonna be converted into an integer. So now we can run this just to confirm that. And you can see now we have integers stored in scores. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this opens up some cool doors for you. See you next time.